even though you think you have good foliage coverage, uh, you can see that the, the fruit can still get sunburned. And this is a problem, uh, you're not going to be able to sell that. Now, especially uh, tomatoes have problems with all kinds of different things. So let's say you just look cross-eyed at a tomato and it's not going to do well. And they have uh, problems with uh, yellowing uh, throughout the fruit. Sometimes it's an internal whitening of the fruit. So this is fruit ripening problems. I just sort of lump all of them together. Uh, when I go through this talk, I'll be call calling these different things fruit ripening problems. Uh, this is yellow shoulders. And uh, this is blossom end rot, which we uh, see sometimes. And then you have different types of fruit cracking. And then you have this type of cracking, which is called rain check. So all, all these things uh, reduce your ability to market the tomatoes. So you, you've done all the hard work of growing the plants, you got the tomatoes growing on there, and all of a sudden the quality dips down because of some, uh, some of these uh, problems. And so I wanted to look at different ways, oops, go back there, of uh, trying to improve the quality of the tomatoes. This slide is, is too complicated and it's, it's a talk in itself, okay? I just have it up here to uh, emphasize two things. And that is the potassium concentration of the leaf tissue has to remain about three to three and a half percent. Once that drops below three percent, you're going to have fruit ripening problems. And Steve Bogosh has talked about this for a number of years here in Pennsylvania. That you have to keep your potassium levels up in your plants. But we see potassium levels consistently drop over the season. They, they do in Maryland, they do in Ohio, they do here in Pennsylvania. So the potassium levels drop over time. And one of the key factors I found is the root zone temperature. So that's the root zone temperature underneath the plastic four inches deep into that soil. And when that gets up around 93, 94% or degrees Fahrenheit, then that drops below 3%. Uh, percent a concentration of potassium in the plant. And then we start to see fruit ripening problems. So what I want to do is look at some ways that we can re uh, reduce the heat on those plants and reduce the UV light on the plants. So I wanted to see if that would help with fruit quality. Okay, one of the things I looked at was kale and clay. And I sprayed that on so it got nice and thick on the plants and sprayed it on the plastic to help uh, reduce the amount of root uh, zone heating. Okay. Uh, the other thing I looked at was white plastic versus black plastic on the tomatoes. And the thing I'll talk about mostly today and show you is shading. Okay, this is a 30% shade cloth. Uh, that's what we found works best. We've tried, we looked at 50% shade cloth, we looked at 10% shade cloth. But the 30% gives us the best overall results. It keeps the heat off of it just enough, and I'll, I'll show you the uh, data for that. But it keeps the heat off of the plants, but allows enough light to go through that the plant grows normally and the fruit develops very well. Okay. Now, when I first started this, uh, I had the uh, shade go all the way down to the ground. But then over time, I found I could lift that up a little bit, and uh, current data shows that we could have it at about this level. So the bottom of this could come to this level, so about half of the plant, a quarter, the top quarter of the plant is covered with this shade. Right? And that's all that you need. You can anchor that if you want. I have all mine anchored. I use little clips. I clip onto the shade cloth, and then tie this down. I don't remove the clips. I don't remove the ropes when I'm done at the end of the year. I simply pull them out of the ground with the anchors and roll that up, put it in a box, and that's all I do with it, and that's how I store it. Next year, I take it out, unroll it, and use it again. I've used this same cloth right here for the last five years. So this can be used over and over again. The reason I really like this particular cloth is that you can rip it and it will not continue to tear. So you, you put a hole in it, that's as far as the hole will go. It doesn't open up and tear anymore. All right. 
Now, these are chlorophyll readings from the plants. And I'm going to jump around from different years to show you uh, over the last four or five years the results of these studies. Uh, I'm not cherry picking the data. I'm not uh, showing you the best data that I had. This is just typical data. And this is uh, about mid-July, and this is uh, late July for these readings. You see, see the shade cloth did real well, especially in uh, later July, uh, in increasing the chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll in the plant is increasing. The, the greenness of the plant is increasing compared to no shade. The clay helped a little bit, and even the white plastic helped a little bit, increasing the amount of chlorophyll reading. All right, this is a little bit complicated, uh, so I'll take you through each of these. This is the soil temperature. This is actually the root zone temperature on July 17th. And you see that shade did the best, uh, keeping it below 90 degrees. And this is the red is the no shade. The clay really didn't help at all uh, with keeping the root zone cooler. But the white plastic, which makes sense, kept the root zone much cooler than the control. In this case, it would be the no shade on black plastic. Okay, this is a plant, this is the amount of uh, heat coming from the surface of the plant. So I measured that. And of course, shade did the best. The other three were about the same. This is the plant, what I call the plant air. That's actually the, the uh, temperature of the canopy, inside the canopy. So it's what the tomato itself is experiencing inside that that plant as it develops. And you see the plant air is much lower in shade and uh, compared to no shade. And even the white plastic and clay did pretty well at reducing the, the canopy temperature. Okay, so this is just soil temperature, root zone temperature in late July. And we can see that the shade did much better than the no shade. And the white plastic again did well. And uh, soil on August 9th, see the temperature is coming up. It actually gets above 95 degrees, even in the shade area, and even in the white plastic. And so that would mean we start to see a drop in potassium in the plant if that stays like that for a week or two. But we still had significantly lower levels of temperature compared to no shade or even the clay. All right, this is real, comp uh, real complex. I apologize for this, but we're just going to concentrate on the phosphorus and the potassium. This is shade, and this is the percent of phosphorus or potassium or any of these nutrients in the leaf tissue. Okay? Now you can see here, shade and black plastic did about the same. They didn't do as well as white plastic or adding extra potassium. So extra potassium in th this system at this time, when I added extra potassium, because that's what's missing from the plant. So in these trials, I added extra potassium through the drip irrigation, okay? To see if that would help with uh, fruit ripening problems. It actually increased the amount of phosphate in the plant, phosphorus in the plant. Uh, potassium is the same thing. Uh, the white plastic and the extra K helped increase that, uh, that nutrient in the plant compared to shade or black plastic. And the thing I'm trying to show here is the shade cloth, this is done on 7-3 when I took these readings. I probably just put the shade cloth on a day or two before. So putting the shade cloth on does not instantaneously do something to the plant. It has to take time to affect that plant and its growth. So we see here a little bit later in the season, uh, on 718, is that the, compared to the control, which is the black plastic, the shade's doing better for uh, potassium. So it's coming up. The, still the two best are white plastic and extra potassium. And again, just potassium later in the season. This is August 8th, and this is September 5th. We see that the shade is now the plant responding to that shade cloth, and so the nutrients are coming up into the plant, or staying in the plant, and you see that the uh, amount of potassium in the plant is at about 4%. So that's above the 3.5 that we're looking for. So shade is doing its job. So is white plastic, and so is adding extra potassium. Okay. 
Yeah, go ahead. Can you give us an idea of what the normal potassium is you're putting on the treatment versus the extra? Uh, like a magnitude? That, or the, or the extra I'm putting in there is probably about 200 pounds of potassium over time. Okay. <clears throat> One of the things I worried about using shade cloth was that it was, would make diseases worse. And the disease we have on this particular farm I was working on is bacterial spot. And it is sometimes really bad. And it took me a couple of years to try to finally figure out how to control it. And the best way of controlling it, we found out, was to uh, hot water bath the seed. Once we hot water bath the seed, we reduced our uh, bacterial spot quite a bit. But there's times I didn't want to hot water treat the seed. I wanted to see what would happen under uh, the worst kind of conditions and how the shade would respond to that. Okay, when, when I start to show you some of these other pictures, I wanted to show you this one first. This is what, this is in 2017, so this is just last season. This is what the field looked like. So I had very nice looking tomatoes, very nice looking plants. This is uh, probably about early July uh, in my field. And you can see some of the shade cloth experiments there. You see the other flags, and th those represent other treatments I had out in the field. But I wanted to show you, because I'm going to show you some pictures that look real ugly, that, that the plants looked really good at the beginning of July. Everything looked great. And then we started to have a lot of heavy rains. And once we started to have the heavy rains, the bacteria spot just spread everywhere. Okay? Okay, this black line right here represents where shade cloth was. Okay? This right here, and it looks better when there's not a lot of bright light on it, so you can't see it as well. This is where there was no shade cloth. But this, field, this particular area was the exact same uh, variety, planted at the exact same time, everything exactly the same, except one had shade cloth on it and the other did not. And that's the only difference between those. I went ahead and sprayed the entire field with a copper fungicide mixture. We sprayed that weekly. So this got sprayed weekly with copper and fungicide. And so you see that the plants are a lot smaller and you see that they have some real problems down on two thirds of the lower leaves. So two thirds of the lower leaves have died from bacterial spot. The ones that had shade still look great and they're still green. This is the same sort of thing. The, this row in front of you is what had the shade cloth. This row with a red line did not have the shade cloth. That is the only difference between these two treatments. Okay. One had shade, one didn't. And that, what that represents, I think, is that the plants are under a lot of stress when we expose them to constant uh, sun and UV light. And they respond to that by uh, doing worse when they're infected with some kind of disease. And so in this case, this is bacteria spot. And you can see that it devastated the... The, the plants that didn't have shade, but the ones that had the 30% shade still looked really great. Yeah? You don't think it's also a leaf wetness difference? It's not shedding some of the water to some extent? No, this, this stays moist the whole time. Go ahead. In other words, everything's exactly the same on those two except for the shade. Correct. Hmm. Yes? Well, well it, it does, because uh, a lot of the, the plastics will absorb the UV light, a lot of UV light. So allow the growth enhancing light to go through the plastic, but the UV light will be absorbed. That's what breaks down the plastic, is it because it absorbs the UV light. And I think that's what's happening in the field, is that too much UV light is hitting the plant throughout the summer, <coughs> and it starts to break down and weaken the plant, stress the plant. That's a, a very good question, and I did that exact experiment for a couple of years, and I got absolutely no difference between where the shade cloth was and where it was not in a high tunnel. 
Any? Okay. Oh. All right. This is just an example. This is from 2017 also. Uh, what time is it? Okay. The, the one on your left hand side is a treatment that didn't have shade. The one that had shade is this one that looks really nice right here in the middle. This one over here to the side is actually one of my experimental uh, plots where I used um, uh, biostimulants in this particular study. It was a mixture of different biostimulants. <clears throat> the thing I want to show here is that year after year, I consistently got good results using shade cloth. Right? I could use white plastic and that helped. I could use the clay and that helped somewhat, but not in every single year. The biostimulants and, and other things I sprayed, sometimes they worked real well, other times they didn't work real well. But the only thing that consistently worked well year in and year out was using the shade cloth. And so the plants always looked better and the fruit, which I'll show you here, always looked better. And that's what I wanted to show right here. Sometimes the, the, the other treatments I use look real good. This is an uh, odd thing about the biostimulants. You can see down here we have a lot of dead tissue. So the bottom of the leaves died, but the top of it pro proliferated. And so I got a lot of new growth by using this bio, uh, set of biostimulants. I can show you another treatment in which it looked like crap. Okay? So it is not consistent. The thing that was consistent was using the shade cloth year in and year out. Okay, an example of this that the white plastic's not going to help with and uh, any other treatments aren't going to help with except one, and that's shade. Uh, this is called rain check on tomatoes. And we, since we had so much rain in July and uh, August this past year in our area, we had three times more rain in July than we normally ever have. And we had twice as much rain in August than we normally have. When you have that and you have exposed tomato fruit like this and the rain pounds on it, and there's other reasons why they think this causes this type of problem in tomatoes, the tomato looks like this. And this is sort of a gradient. These, these tomatoes you might be able to sell and as you go over to the right, you're not going to be able to sell any of these over here. And this is all rain check. That's the only thing that's causing this problem. The thing that amazed me about this was that none of the fruit underneath the shade had any rain check. None of it. Okay? And just to let you know, I don't have money in shade cloth. Okay? <laughs> I don't own any, any, anything. They don't, nobody pays me to do this. Right? I was surprised by this. This and the bacterial spot are the two things that really surprised me about using shade cloth, the difference between using it and not using it. So about 33% of the fruit in the no shade plots, regardless of what the treatment was, whether it was white plastic, whether it was a biostimulant, had 33% of the fruit was damaged by rain check. Yeah. Oh yeah, most of the time I did. So the question was, uh, did I heat treat the seeds when I used shade cloth? Sometimes I did, but most of the time I did not. Because I wanted to see what happened to the bacterial spot and would it spread and would it be worse underneath the shade cloth. Okay, okay. okay so these are some uh, uh, data about the yield. This is from 2014. This is white plastic. This is uh, blossom end rot. This is percent fruit with quality problems. So this is percent of the fruit that had blossom end rot, percent of the fruit that had fruit ripening problems. Any of those problems I showed you, rain check or the internal whitening or the yellow shoulders or anything like that. You can see by far that shade cloth did the best compared to white plastic. This is no shade, this is the control. This is clay, this is extra potassium. So extra potassium helps with fruit ripening problems, because that's what it's supposed to do, but it does nothing for blossom end rot, because that is more of a calcium water issue. And so the shade cloth did better here. The white actually did pretty well too, but not as, not as good as the shade in 2014. All right, this is marketable yield of tomatoes. This is 2015, these are pounds per plot. And this is black plastic, the control, 
adding extra potassium, having white plastic, and then having shade. And so when it comes down to marketable yield of tomatoes, nothing beats the shade. Okay. Where do you put the shade on? Okay, that's a good question. I was going to go over that. <clears throat> One of the things you do not want to do is put the shade on too early. If you put the two shade on early, you've screwed yourself. Okay? And I know that because I've screwed myself. <laughs> and what happens is I put it on in June, and my plants look great at, in mid-July. They were nice and green, very pretty. I had no tomatoes. You've got to have, not the pollination, that didn't matter. Because uh, usually uh, outdoors we get wind pollination, and the wind passes through it easily. It's just there wasn't enough energy to finish off the fruit, to b make those flowers turn into fruit. So you cannot put it on too early. And for us down in Maryland, and uh, uh, Central Maryland, it, uh, a rule of thumb is after July 4th, we put it on. But you want to put it on after the first two or three clusters have gotten about an inch, two inches big, the fruit. The first two or three clusters, okay? And, and the reason for that is uh, those first couple clusters are deep in the plant. They're protected by the foliage. They're not going to get hit with anything. They have a lot of nutrients because there are no other fruit, basically, on the plant. So they got enough nutrients and they have enough protection that they do well. And that plant needs more energy. Yes? Are these all determinate varieties? Yes, they're all determinate. I have worked with indeterminate varieties. And uh, the shade, because it, the, the indeterminate varieties get so, so much bigger, they're a little bit harder to put the shade over. Uh, I, get, I don't get as consistent results as I do with the determinate varieties, as far as quality. Right. Yes? Have you ever tried shade with the whole field? No. Uh, if I did the whole field, uh, then it would be difficult to do it during the season. So I probably have to put it on too early. I like doing it this way, but you could do it the whole field. But you'd have to make sure that you gave the plants a chance to go through their vegetative growth and then put the shade on. So you could do it that way. Do you think it would, it would still work? It doesn't have to be? It doesn't have to be over the plants like that, just as long as it, it's just like a high tunnel. The high tunnel could be over the plants and, and just protect it from the UV light. I think it's mostly what's happening here with the shade. It's protecting the plant from intensive UV light over the season. Yes? You, you pull the uh, shade off in order to pick and then put it right back on? Yeah, we'll, we'll take off one side of it, flip it over, go ahead and harvest, and then flip it back on. And that's the only time where you remove it. We spray right through it. We spray the fungicide through it, and we spray insecticide through it. Have not had any problem with insects. Have not had any problem with diseases, as I've shown you. Yes? That's what I, I was hoping, but I have not seen it. I, ju I just haven't, haven't seen any difference one way or the other. Yeah? How is twining work, especially with indeterminate varieties? Uh, I, I think they have other problems. Uh, they, they, a lot of times they get too big and they start to crack, and I, I still haven't figured out uh, how best to handle that. Uh, uh, controlling the water more. So in high tunnels, I have more success with the indeterminate varieties. Yeah, as far as how did you twine them? Did you keep the shade cloth off? Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. How did I tie them? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have the shade cloth on at that time. Okay. So by the time we put the shade cloth on, the determinate varieties, they, they've reached their top. Yeah. And so then we put the shade cloth on. She asked, well, when, when did, did we take off shade cloth to tie them? And we didn't have to because we didn't have the shade cloth on at that time. Yeah. <coughs> yes? What, uh, you used white plastic for this. A lot of people start off with black. Why did you abandon the kaolin spray application? <coughs> Is that something that you'd have to do over and over again? Yes. I, I didn't abandon them. In, in the uh, trials where I had kaolin clay and looked at that for the season, I, I continued to spray through the season. And you have to spray... If you have a lot of rain, it is a real pain. It's just not going to stay on. It works best, the kaolin clay works best if it's dry and you spray, build up the clay on the plants. 
and then after a, a light rain, a half inch, uh, it still stays on. But if you get an inch rain and three days later you get another half inch rain, it starts to come off. And then you have to go out and apply it again. Yeah. Just real quick, did you try uh, the white plastic and skate cross? Did that make any Yes, I did. Uh, okay. Some of the experiments I did that. Uh, overall, it didn't make much difference from the just using shade. Okay. Oh, I oh, oh man. I always like to show little pictures of uh, the data I just showed. So this is shade. This is a harvested shade tomatoes. This is on white plastic. This is just adding extra potassium, and this is no shade. And you see the different shade tomatoes are a little bit larger. More uh, red uh, consistently. Uh, even the white plastic did pretty well, but it had some uneven ripening tomatoes. Extra potassium helped with uneven ripening. But you can see right here, this is fruit cracking. Extra potassium and white plastic does nothing for fruit cracking, right? But the shade does. Okay. And this is just comparing them up close with each other. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is, I don't have time to go over the peppers, uh, but the same principle uh, uh, we see the, in the peppers that we did in the uh, uh, tomatoes. I'll go real quick, just go right to the uh, fruit problems. This is blossom end rot, and you see the shade worked really well compared to no shade for fruit problems. The clay was intermediate, and tying up your plants helps with these things. Oh, man. Uh, this is shade, this is 2013, no shade, clay, tide. And we see that the shade did a lot better with the yields. This is uh, sweet banana peppers. Uh, shade, much better than no shade in the peppers. All through uh, late July, mid, early August, and late August. The shade worked well. But the clay also did pretty well itself. It was sort of intermediate uh, between the uh, shade and the no shade. Okay. Emphasize, do not put the shade on too early, you'll be very unhappy. Okay. Place shade over tomatoes after about two or three fruit clusters, uh, and the fruit of root have reached one to two inches in size. So those first couple of fruit clusters have to start growing and start to get bigger, all right, before you put on the shade. Shade can go on a little bit earlier with the pepper, a quarter to half size. 30% shade cloth, but nothing stronger, or you're going to reduce the amount of light reaching the plant. You only need to cover the top quarter to half of the plants. You don't need to cover the whole plants like some of the pictures I showed you. You can anchor it at the bottom and pull it down. <clears throat> or I found if you attach it just to the top, to the stakes, tie it or clip it to those top of the stakes, uh, it does just as well. The wind will blow it up. Sometimes it'll blow it over, and then you have to come out to pull it back over. But overall, it does pretty well, and you don't have to fool around with the rope or the anchors. And you can leave the covers in place as you apply your fungicides or insecticides. It seems to have no effect on reducing your fungicides and insecticides. Yes? What about uh, disinfecting the cover every year? You worry about disease? No. I, I'm, he asked, should I disinfect the, uh, the cover every year? I, not, I have not done that, and I have not seen any problems. Yes? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, he asked if I've seen less uh, gold fleck, and I have seen less, uh, but it, it really depends on, uh, the, I'll just say yes. Yes? Uh, just real quick, the, uh, with the shade cloth on and the bacteria spot, the, the, the splice in the water, was, you, know, you figure that's the reason why it didn't spread as badly. With the shade it's probably one of the reasons, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I think there's probably two or three right. different, there's right. several different reasons why. Okay. Yeah. When you said the shade underneath the high tunnel was not a benefit, yes. can you say what specific plastic you were using? Uh, just whatever uh, high tunnel plastic is. It wasn't any of the, the fancy stuff that diffuses the light or anything. It's just, just regular plastic. Just regular plastic. Okay. Yes? You marketing the tomatoes or shade burn tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so we should probably move on. If you, are you going to be around out in the yeah. hall for more questions? If you uh, want to catch up with Jerry, thanks.